This is a show I like to call Game Changer. It's a chance for me to offer a different perspective. You're saving football manager. Sometimes it may require just a small little tweak. It's not meant to be a show where I criticize the way you play. It's meant to be a show where I offer maybe, you know, I might see something different from other people. And, well, I hope that your game out in one another. My name is Daljit. Welcome to Bust the Net. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification button to stay in touch for more videos like this. So we've got a save here from Zen and it features a club called Sunderland. It's a very interesting save because we find our friend in trouble at the bottom of the English Premier League. Well, all's not lost. We are going to be playing four matches. Two home, two away. We're going to be playing away to Arsenal and City and then we've got home matches against West Ham and Burnley on, on today's show. So we're going to bring you highlights of those games. But firstly, let's take a look at the situation that you find yourself in. You've been playing, you got promoted playing one formation, right? And then you did that pretty well, but then you came into the premiership, you switched to a 4 3 one too narrow. The challenge with Changing formations is you generally need to have a lot of players, right? You, you have to be comfortable playing the system. Now, I understand you sent me a message saying you have a lot of defensive midfielders, you've got lots of midfielders, and, well, you felt that it gave you a choice, chance to play the 4 3 one too. Now, the 4 3 one also depends on you having lots of fullbacks. The thing is, when you play with a wingerless formation, your wingbacks become very important. You need at least four of them, minimum. You need four equally good wingbacks and they all have to be fast because they are the only ones who are going up and down those flanks. So they're going to have, have to have very high work rates. They're going to have to be very brave. They're going to have to have very high levels of teamwork. And you need four of them because the moment they pick up a yellow card, you're going to have to think about bringing somebody else on to take their place. Because if they get one yellow card, there's a very strong chance they'll get another one and they'll get sent off. That's the very nature of these kind of systems because of the pressure that's applied down the flanks. The first thing, you're playing with a wingerless system. The second thing I also noticed was, um, here we go, one of your left backs got sent off when you played the wingerless system. The second thing I noticed is this, height, far post marking, lacking so your set pieces are in trouble so you've got to think about having more players on the pitch will give you strength in the air so you've got this guy nice he's 17 jumping reach you've got zach who's 15 jumping reach but it's a bit slow we got cedric we got smith you played him as a mcr but he's attacking his 11 his position is 13 he's okay he's not too bad we could you could use him in a variety of positions moving forward definitely could play him in a four one two three but for now what's more important is surviving so this player well we may not be able to use him just yet because we need to put results on the board then we got this player simons very nice player i like him a lot because he's got good off the ball good positioning more importantly he's got tackling teamwork and work rate then we've got Mbalo, definitely a player that we have to find some way of fitting him into the team because um, he has got a pace going forward. He can hold on to the ball, he can do something with the ball and hopefully, you know, get us, you know, get us a few goals. So the challenge here was it, you couldn't defend your set pieces. Then we, I was, saw this match against uh, Chelsea and it was definitely case in point where you were torn apart by acceleration right so yeah your team couldn't defend on this on the break conceded one goal again set piece did you have enough players back here they go down the flanks they open you up down the flanks where you are very vulnerable down the left flank and uh you can see that the goal again now down the left flank again another vulnerability so a lot of these were down to your players themselves so when i'm when i do these kind of saves the first thing i like to do is always like to get a feel for the kind of players that i have 
Now, we have a slight situation here in the sense that we only really have one left back in this club. As far as right backs are concerned, we have a few. Um, we have Kirin Tripper, uh, we have Cedric, and probably this player, Golaski. Golaski, who's not bad. Um, only thing that we have to be concerned about with players like that is we need to check whether they have uh, the inclination to go in dirty. And this guy, this player, while he's very aggressive, he looks like he could also become a very good central defender. And if I were to be playing this game, I'll probably be using him a lot because he gives me a lot of options. I could use him as a fullback and then I could also use him as a um, central defender. But this team has got three very strong uh, central defenders, Kirin Tripper, Cedric, and they've got Golazki. But the left back position, there is a, there's a big question mark there. Now, this is not the end of the world. However, what, we, what I normally tend to do after that is I try to figure out if there's, there are other options. And for that, I typically look at DMs. So then we have other DMs here. We've got uh, George Dobson. We've got Fred. We've got Zavi Simon, Simmons. We've got Ben White, who's a central defender. We got Benning Me, who's only who's right only. Uh, we have uh, quite a few players, and George Dobson. While he's okay, he's twenty five years old. He's got decent decision making. He's not exactly the fastest player on the block. Uh, we have Fred, uh, left footed, definitely a a person that you can play in several positions. He likes to switch the ball to the other flank. Uh, we have Benning Me, who's right only, which means that he's got absolutely no left foot. And then uh, we have the rest of the players. And then we've got James Garner, who you have uh, taken on loan from Manchester United. Well, the nice thing about him is he's got a left and a right foot, right? When you see something like a right, you mean as a left foot. Now, this is something that you need to start considering when you have a situation like what you're facing, which is no options uh, on flank. So then when I'm looking uh, in the central midfield positions, you've got quite a lot of players with pace. So this brings up the question about how do you want to play? Now, um, for the start of the season, you have you had you've been playing with a 4-3-1-2, 4-3-1-2, but last season, you played with a 4-1-4-1. The season before that, uh, it's pretty hard. I can't really tell what you were doing the season before that, but I'm, I'm sure you probably know what you were doing. Um, in my experience, sometimes it's better to stick to what you've been doing thus far. Now, personally speaking, how you play will ultimately depend on your defenders. If your defender's jumping reach is very good, then you've got a lot of options. But your jumping reach is only 17 and 15. So your best defenders are 17 and 15, but in most of your matches when you've been playing uh, this season, you've been playing with uh, a pair in Ben White and D-Zang. Both their jumping reach is 14. This guy's jumping reach is 15. They're okay. They're not fantastic, but they're going to get ripped by pace. This guy is 13. His bravery is only 8. This guy is uh, 15. He's not too bad. However, when you're playing a 4-3-1-2, this entire flank is opened up. So, generally, you don't play with a 4-3-1-2 unless these guys are very fast. You can expect them to tackle and you can control the ball elegantly and efficiently in midfield. And uh, if your possession numbers are like this, then it's, it's something to be worried about. And if you just pick another team, maybe some other team that you should have stood a chance against, like Middlesbrough at home, your possession numbers may have been a lot higher. You're playing at 57%. For some strange reason, here you wanted to go with a 4-4-2. You've been experimenting uh, in some of your matches. Uh, when you play the 4-3-1-2, uh, again, you struggle for possession and creating anything worthwhile. So here, it's important to ask what your options are. This, you find out from your defenders. Now, your defender's jumping reach isn't that fantastic. So, this means, literally, you shouldn't be playing that. 
if you have very good defenders who can deal with crosses, then it makes sense to play, to draw teams in, you win the header, and then you recycle it into an attack. Right? So, for now, we're looking at our attacking force. Jumping reach, you only got Pietro Pellegrini, you can be a, like a target man. And you probably have other strikers. And here it's important to look at the acceleration. There are some strikers that can get away with 15 for acceleration. Uh, and then we're looking at things like off the ball. So for off the ball, we are looking to see whether any of these players have got fantastic off the ball. I think average numbers were like 13 and 14 for your team, which is okay. This means that, you know, again, you might have one guy who's uh, great at winning the ball in the air, but are the other players good enough at finding? space and in themselves so you could take a chance right there, there's the two ways to skin this cat one you play a 4-4-2 a 4-4-2 dm basically with two defensive midfielders and two strikers then you protect the flanks or you play something a bit more offensive like a 4-1-2-3 and then you are always occupying their back line and you're not playing so aggressively from the back but you are trying to hold your shape and hitting teams on the counter so both options would have been something that I would have gone for. I would not have gone for a 4-3-1-2. That, in my opinion, was a mistake. So this is it, right? So you've got a 4-3-1-2 wing back, wing back, um, and then um, you've got overlap, overlap, and then you've got focus play to the middle, which puts a lot of pressure on the back line. If this guy, if this guy has got low bravery, as we already know, um, any if he gets yellow card, gets an injury, we've got an issue. I mean, you, you have Danny Rose, but guess what? <laughs> He's 33 years old. Uh, and something happened to me as well. Um, when I picked up the save, we had nine days to go before Arsenal match. A day before the Arsenal match, he's out for the next six weeks. So it was. So I never had a chance, you know, I never had a chance to say, see how Danny Rose would play. So it just reinforces my point about you needing more than just two left backs you need three left backs uh you might have some other decent players that like banning me is on the bench you, you definitely could play a 4-1-2-3 without a shadow of a doubt you can definitely play a 4-1-2-3 but right now i'm thinking you need to have an option of basically you know steering your ship away from the rocks you know let's get to some safe water first steady the ship a bit before we run aground so my plan was really simple go back to a system that is can protect your flanks right account for garbert himself right you know he's not gonna bomb for it i was left with one wing back so i had to come up with a system of play which at least gave me more than just one option in attack but at least gave me some protection uh at the back when we are defending against the transition so we ended up adopting a 442 dm system so how did we do well we didn't do too badly but there's something i want to point out before we go any further as you can see this is the week that i played you definitely need to start taking advantage of match preparation for every single game you need every single bonus you can get, and these give you a bonus. Defensive shape, attacking movement, your defensive free kicks, your defensive corners. Before that, we had attacking free kicks, attacking corners, and we did all that before this match. And uh, our results have shown uh, some improvement. But what you absolutely need to do when you when you are when you have the save is you gotta make sure that you are doing that as well. Our results, well, they surprised me actually. Against Arsenal, I was fully prepared for a 5-0 defeat. Instead, we turned it into a 3-1 victory. And then we followed that up with another 3-1 victory to West Ham. And just when my just to make sure that my head wouldn't get too big for my shoulders, uh, I was brought back down to earth with a 3-1 defeat to Manchester City. And But we followed that up with a 2-1 win over Burnley. Tactically, I kept using the same team. I use Pellegrini, Hugerwerf, Garner, and Barlow. Simons was just absolutely fantastic. Banning me. This is the play. This was the... Tact Tactically, we used this team. 
right? So essentially, we use the Targeman advanced forward. Targeman we're dropping here. In, you know, we had an inverted winger and a volante with a uh, wing back overlapping. This way, we get a lot of options down this area when we need to pass the ball. And then on the left flank, we have a slightly different <laughs> uh, setup where we have a um, player that might hoof the ball up for this guy. And we know this guy is just hopeless to, with def when it comes to defending since most of the attacks seem to come down this way. So we turn this guy into a half bank. So he'd be more aggressive patrolling this area. This gave us a bit more solidity. And if the ball did come back this way, we didn't want this guy to uh, spend too much time thinking about who he had to give the ball to. All he wanted him to do was just hoof the ball. Just pray to God, just kick the ball as far as you can. And uh, one thing we did add in this game uh, as we started playing more and more was uh, the need for set pieces. Now, what I like about this setup is your jumping reach. So you're going to have a few players here who've got jumping reach, right? So you've got one, two, these two guys, and you've got Pellegrini. So you've got three players who potentially have very good jumping reach. If push comes to shove, we can always pull Cedric off and then push this player here, and then we can play with Zach in defense then what we actually have are three players who've got fantastic jumping reach. So you've got fantastic options here. So this gave us a lot of options. So I tended to, in some matches, I tended to play him here. But this is how we kept it for most of, uh, most of our matches because I wanted to utilize Cedric's ability to get up really quickly and, uh, you know, do something because Gol this Golazewski doesn't have a cross in him just yet. We use them as a defender in most of our games. For Arsenal, things didn't get off to a good start because they were attacking us and uh, in a just in a one-minute spell, basically, everything went south for them. They gave up a penalty, which we converted. And then from the restart, things just got worse for them as we made it too. And before the end of the first half, this is what I like about having those rolls on the right flank. We were able to keep the ball relatively comfortably before creating what was the third goal. Maybe the keeper should have tried a bit harder. In the match against Sunderland, this reinforced my view that Simons is a very good player for his side. Garbert is better going forward. The link-up play with the target man was very nice. Then well, we managed to recycle possession. Uh, Simons again with a lovely turn and then he slides it over on Pellegrini and that gave us a 3-1 win over West Ham. Against Manchester City, I never really expected us to win. In fact, we were defending for like the better part of the entire match. Uh, there were basically 17 shots before we created the first goal of the match. And at this point, I thought we were going to FM the whole match. But unfortunately for us, City came back and they beat us 3-1. Against Burnley, I was very happy to see how the team was keeping the ball. We managed to move the ball around the pitch really effectively. And we were able to use uh, the target man well, kept winning the second ball. And we were able to use the flanks to good measure. And this was the time when I decided to turn on play for set pieces. So these set pieces actually gave us a slight edge because this team actually has got a lot of height and it's something that I was going to start playing to in this game. And we managed to score the opening goal from a set piece and then in the 39th minute, Cedric played it to Fred, Umaro then goes and drops one at the far post, Ghana hitting it home for a 2-1 win over Burnley. When it comes to tactics, I want to keep it relatively simple. So we went with uh, player defense overlap right, more direct tempo, higher tempo with, uh, we want to use the flanks a bit more. Now this is the area where things get a bit interesting. If I want to see my inverted winger go all the way down the flank, try a cut back, I go for low crosses. If I think there's space, but I don't want my players overcommitted too much, then go for hit early crosses, pass into space with mixed crosses. Why? Because we've got a guy called Pietro Pellegrini who's pretty strong in the air. So this depends on the situation. So if I'm willing to take a bit of, uh, if I'm not willing to take too many chances, then I just go hit early cross, pass into space, mixed crosses. If I'm willing to throw more, you know, I, if I really want to gamble, 
because they have given me wing backs, I go hit the cross pass into space. Now, if I am very comfortable with my team, I might want to go low crosses because I want my inverted winger to go all the way down the flank and try a cut back. So this is how I set things up. As when it comes to this, I'm going to let decision making take its course because I don't think we want to counter press because then we'll be always be camping so high up the pitch. I'm, I have no confidence in uh, this guy ever tankling. <laughs> So we're not playing with counter press on at all. Uh, then, uh, as far as the uh, offside trap and the high line navigation, high defense, you know, this is going to be interesting. This is intentional. I'm going very narrow because I want to draw teams into attacking us down the flanks. So when they go down the flanks, they're going to drop in crosses, right? When they drop in crosses, I got two big tall players here who can win hitters and then knock it down. The only thing about off about banning me is he plays short simple passes which is a bit of a bummer so we have to depend on him being able to find any of these players so that we can get it to vol the volante or if banning me decides he's going to pass it back to this guy then this guy who's one over the top so we kind of use his play short simple passes to keep the to keep the ball uh in this side of the pitch which isn't too bad so it's not too bad and we've done okay so far so this is how i set set the tactic up and there's one final piece to the puzzle it's called crossing target man so we've got a target man here this guy is always going to be crossing to the target man and so will this guy yeah, except he's got something else in his toolkit it's called more direct passes there's a logical reason behind this now if he's going to make a more direct pass it's going to go this way to this player you're going to try risky passes towards this player and this player has got acceleration, agility, dribbling. So he can, if he gets away with the ball, he's going to be quite a handful for a lot of teams because he's also got very good off the ball. So we're actually leveraging on this guy getting away and we're using Garbert as a wing back on the tank. My recommendation for you going forward is actually to use the January transfer window to bring in another two fullbacks for the left side. Once you get the two fullbacks at the left side, you can actually switch to something like this, a 4 one, two, three, which is something that I wanted to use. Or you could go with uh, something like an inside forward on support, um, inside forward on support, maybe uh, advanced one on attack or even a target man on attack. And then you could go with a um, carry low on support with a central midfielder on attack and maybe a deep line playmaker on support or even a register on support and then you could become a bit more aggressive with your fullbacks right, in this case i'll probably definitely be looking at counter press and be playing something like this without the prevent show go keep it this way once again you can do this because you've got height in the box so these guys are really tall so you could play with a deep line playmaker or you could play with a register right and what you will end up seeing is these guys side against the high press these guys will play the ball to this player who can hoof the ball up uh you can turn this guy into a no-nonsense central defender if you wanted to and uh he might play the ball down the line now here in this setup i'll probably do it like this I'll turn this, both these guys into players that are willing to channel the ball down the flanks. So they will just play the ball like this behind the lines. And then you've got a CM on the tank, a Carrello, maybe even a ball winning midfielder in this particular case. If you still need to have Luka, Luka, but we can also set up a tactic like this and play with it. It's simple, but what you're going to avoid is using overlaps. Once again, don't forget, you need to go out there, get yourself left backs that is going to solve a lot of problems for your team and you probably are going to start shooting up the table because your central midfield is actually quite good your attack is also quite good so you got plenty of options and you definitely will need to play a 4-1-2-3 moving forward um, the 4-4-2 dm is just there for you to basically you know halt the run, bad run so once you get yourself those two full backs you can start attacking the table and start moving up with a 4-1-2-3 and there's so many ways you can play a 4 1 2 3. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Game Changer. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. Please see if, please stay safe, healthy, and I'll catch up with you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Bye bye.